Next up is Unity Mod Manager. We're on version 21.4 now, so if you're on 12.7, you're gonna have a bad time. If you've never installed it before, simply navigate to your Skater XL install directory, which is in Steam Apps, Common, and finally Skater XL. When you hit OK, you should be good to go. Important side note, if you already had Mod Manager and some mods installed before switching to the new version of the game, the new update will uninstall Mod Manager. Simply open it back up and hit install, and you will be fine. All right, now it's time to install some mods. First and foremost, we're gonna start with the XL Shred menu. This is the most important mod. You literally cannot use any mods without this one. Do not delete it, please, for the love of God. All right, now that we got Shred Menu in there, we can go ahead and add our first essential mod, Babo Settings, which is on version 6.8. This is pretty much a post-processing suite, but we'll get into the specifics of each mod in the next section. Up next, we're gonna toss in the Sound Mod for some shameless self-promo. This is on version two now. Next, we're gonna toss in Stats Menu, which is on version 1.4.0b. This is a big boy mod that replaces tons of gameplay mods from older builds of the game. Following that, we're going to toss in XL Multiplayer, which, uh, it's, it's multiplayer, what do, you, uh, what do you want me to say, huh? Last but not least, we're throwing in Fleep's Improved Skin Editor. This built upon the old skin editor by Silent Boss and provides a new folder structure as well as a ton of new hats to play with. Once you get everything dragged in there, you can start up that game. You should be greeted with this wonderful Mod Manager menu, which shows all your mods in a nice list. Don't worry about this red dot up there. That's just the multiplayer mod letting you know you're offline. In like the ugliest, most invasive way. But just hit tab, you can get rid of it. Now that you're actually in the game, we can start going over what each mod actually does and how to actually use it. The first one we're gonna talk about is Babo Settings. Babo Settings opens with the backspace key and gives this neat little menu. On the basic tab, you can enable post-processing, change your V-Sync settings, full screen settings, as well as anti-aliasing. This is literally just the surface though. Switching over to the presets tab is where this mod really opens up. This is where, you guessed it, your presets live, which you can customize as you see fit. You can build off existing ones, or just make your own. You can even share the ones you make with your friends. I link mine in the description. Available settings include ambient occlusion, color grading and tone mappers, as well as lens distortion and vignette for those crispy fisheye shots. When it comes to filming fisheye though, there's a few things to keep in mind. You're gonna want that intensity to sit somewhere between 60 and 70. Pulling it too far back or forward can give you um, interesting results. What are you, what are you doing? Stop, don't, know. There's also a bunch of different camera styles to choose from, like low, normal, uh, skate, and POV, which is actually really fun. Great for bombing hills. Only thing is, uh, the pin dropper doesn't really work. The normal camera mode also provides some options for position and rotation responsiveness. This, I mean, controls how responsive the camera is to rotation and position. If you play around with it a little bit, you can get some uh, funky stuff that adds a little bit more of a dynamic feel to the camera. Now that we've gotten Babo settings out of the way, we can get into the real big boy mod. The stat menu. Disabled auto catch, realistic catch mods, flip and scoop speed, gravity mod, real flips, all pop force mods, the list goes on. If it was made before, it's been condensed into this wonderful little package right here with a whole host of extras to boot. Ever wanted to disable respawning so you can just lie there after a bail? And lie there? And lie there? How about some baby pop action? A quick flick on the stick gets you a nice little baby op. Hold a bit longer for your regular low pop. The catch mods have made a comeback. Try and catch with the board upside down? Good luck, bozo. How about separate sliders for scoop and flip speed? Nothing like a little extra control, am I right? Top speed or push speed, huh? Drop it down to four if you want to skate like a, a, like a snail. There's some really dirty bearings, I don't, I don't know. Or turn it up to 12 and skate like Dennis Booznitz and Brandon Westgate had a baby, which would really just be two giant legs. You can also turn up your body spin speed and, uh, I mean, some, yeah, I don't really know, but you can do low pop freeze really easily. 
grind spin speed? Tell Michael Polizzi he's about to auto catch these hands because there's a new ledge dancer in town, son. Truck tightness has made a comeback, and this time it doesn't break anything. Keep it at 100 if you want to physically be unable to move your board, or drop it down to zero if you want a little more wiggle in your life. The benefit of dropping it down to zero is you can actually make your tricks a little bit more vertical. For example, with this pop shove, turn against it before you scoop. Look at that. Fancy. Much like your push speed, you can also change your pump force to go as fast or as slow as you want. If you like doing body varials all the time, totally decoupled board rotation is for you. If you want to do stuff like frontside flips, you gotta scoop a hard flip, pal. If you don't want to have to play like that, regular decoupled board rotation only affects tricks that are scooped, so you can still do normal backside and frontside flips. I'm Jay Boogie, and I'm going to the moon! The stats menu lets you do a whole lot more than just play with your stats though. Klepto's taking this thing to revolutionary new levels thanks to the board menu. This is a metaphorical skate shop at your fingertips allowing you to swap between various different board shapes and sizes as well as four separate truck models and four separate wheel models. These can all be changed on the fly in the editor and your graphics will even stretch to fit the new models. Taking it a step even further though, you can customize things even down to the singular wheel. And even better, the mod will pull from your original skateboard textures, not even requiring separate ones to get these jobs done. You just choose your specific button with either change grip, change trucks, or change wheels. Just make sure you select don't use the subfolders and the game will parse everything from your original skateboard folder. People who like a little more organization can use these folders, they'll just have to set up specific ones for deck, grip, trucks, and wheels. And if you thought the mod was done there, you're still wrong. Because now we have dynamic, progressive boardware, even down to snapping your deck. You can toggle grip wear, truck wear, the snap deck effects, as well as the status bar, which will live in the top left corner of your screen. This essentially acts as a damage meter for your skateboard, which will chip away over time as you skate. Your crispy deck graphics will slowly wear down over time, much like in real life, and your board will get weaker and weaker until it snaps. This doesn't show up in replay yet, though. You can also turn on Ken Snap at Random, which you guessed it, will make the board snap at random. Now this brings us to the brand new skin editor. This one's been around since Alpha, so you may already be familiar with it, but the recent update by Fleep provides a bunch of new options. There's 12 brand new hat meshes to choose from, as well as an improved organizational structure within the mod itself. Unfortunately, I can't show you any of these hats. I sold my soul for the Nike hat I'm wearing. You can take it off though, that's funny. Swapping clothes is just as easy as it was before, and now things are separated into their own neat little categories. The old mod's file structure still applies though, so if you have an old skin folder from the previous skin editor, your clothes will still work fine. Just make sure you're using textures for the new build of the game and not the alpha version. Those UVs do not match up. You can also take your clothes off, because I mean, why not? It also looks like weirdly natural. Once your nipples get cold though, just go back to the gear menu. You'll get your clothes back. Now just in case you were wondering, the skin folder does still live in your documents Skater XL folder. There's a ton of folders in there now because of the board menu and the additional hats, but it's not, it's not so bad. It looks intimidating, but I got you. And I say I got you because if you go in the description, I provided a download link to an already created folder structures so you don't have to worry about creating these folders yourself. Then you just put the textures in the corresponding folder and the game will load them accordingly. This is also the same for your maps folder which has not moved from the documents folder. Hondun's map importer has actually been built into the official game now at this point and your custom maps can be accessed in game via the pause menu. Just scroll down to maps and hit one of the bumper buttons to switch to the custom maps section. This brings us to our second to last mod, Multiplayer, the easiest mod that gives people the most confusion. This opens up with P, which gives you the nice menu. Type in your username and hit Open Server Browser. Take a look and see what map the server is on, and as long as you have it, hit Connect, and you will be brought straight to the map. There's even a nice chat window on the bottom right. 
then there you go. It's that simple. Enjoy shredding with your homies. Last but not least, we have the sound mod. Not necessarily a gameplay mod, this is my own personal labor of love that adds currently about 180 original sounds that I recorded to the game. I gotta give a huge shout out to Babo and Klepto because without them handling the code side of things, this mod probably wouldn't have happened. But I'm just gonna play some clips back to back with sound mod and non-sound mod, and you guys can let me know in the comments if you can tell the difference. 